Hey guys, welcome to Online Strategy Podcast on this Saturday, November 26th, after Thanksgiving. First, I want to say I hope that all of you had a really, really wonderful Thanksgiving, whatever that means to you. I personally like to take some time and really reflect on the things that I'm thankful for, the wonderful things I have in my life, and uh, the things that are really important to me. So I hope whatever it was for you, you were able to uh, see some friends or family or do something special during that day and this possible break for you. Well, I haven't been on a show and since May, I believe it was May 22nd, 2022 is the last time I've been on online strategy podcast. For those of you that are new to listening, this podcast is specifically about real life experiences in the field of digital advertising, digital marketing, online public relations, and a lot of other in-between, including WordPress, Wix, Equid, Square, other big, interesting topics that are related to online presence and online shopping, online advertising. In this specific podcast, I want to talk to you about reflecting one on the year, But I want to roll back to 1999. No, 1999 was not when the internet started. We all know that. However, it was a particular time when there were a lot of unique things happening that I believe paved the way and set the foundation for what we know today as successful online advertising and successful online marketing. But before I jump right completely into that, I want to say something that's really important, and this is a reflection point in relation to advertising and marketing, that the concepts of advertising and marketing haven't changed since the beginning of advertising and marketing, whether way before the internet, way before billboards, way before everything else, there was a certain thing in an underlying common denominator that is a part of all, all successful, effective, impacting advertising and promotion. And you know that when I talk about this topic, you know that advertising and promotion doesn't just mean a service or a product. This extends the same way to an idea, a thought, something you're trying to uh, get across to someone else. So what I want to talk about briefly is just this very fundamental rule, and I would call it a fundamental law in advertising and marketing, something that always holds true, is that if you're not connecting, you're not getting your message across. So you know, in modern, in modern advertising and marketing, we talk about audiences, uh, demographics, public. All of these different types of groupings of people, the way that we speak to them through campaigns. And if you've listened to my podcast for any amount of time or worked with me in the past, you know that one of my other founding ideas or fundamental ideas that I use a lot in this subject is related to knowing who your public are, knowing your audience, knowing what they like, knowing what they respond to. But on the end of on the other end of this, there's a whole other subject, and that's the product service idea that you're presenting. And so there's so, there's so many factors to success in a business, and marketing is just one part of it. But it's such an important part because it really is your front line, your first impression, your, the way you impress on others. And there is a reason why in advertising, 
imp- the word impressions is used as a metric. Impressions you can think of in its most simple form as a billboard. When you're driving down the highway and you see a billboard, the advertising agency might calculate that based on number of impressions. How many cars travel on that highway at that time? Is it a slow road? Is the billboard easy to see? There's all these factors that come into the value of that placement and positioning or, you know, that ad location in the same way that in Google, organic search results, for example, if I'm a uh, ideal in w- red shoes, and that's all my market is, is shoes that are red, and when you search Google and best red shoes and I come up on the top, that is a really great place to be in terms of impressions. The number of people that can potentially see you is really what it's about in a value point. Now, it all breaks down even further when you start looking at the purpose of the campaign that you're running. Are you trying to generate brand new customers? Are you trying to speak to your existing customers? Are you trying to speak in the middle somewhere? People that have been a customer or maybe a customer, but then they, they probably know about you. There's all these different shades of where someone is at in relation to your product, service, idea, whatever it is you're putting out there. So analytics, metrics, and data are so important. And rewinding back to 1999, we didn't have the exact types of metrics that we have today and the volume and the quantity and the detail Add into that, back then was a little more Wild West because in present time, we have a lot more restrictions and privacy concerns that come into play when when it comes to advertising and options that consumers have on their devices, in their browsers, on their phones that they can actually control and inhibit the potential to be advertised to. So... We're playing a really unique game, but the one thing, again, going back to the very common denominator is connecting. So if you can't or you have tried and failed with online digital advertising and promotion, sometimes postcards are the solution for your business and the most effective solution. Or, as goes with almost any product or service, word of mouth is predominantly across the boards, I can say confidently nine times out of 10, word of mouth is going to be the most effective way to grow your brand, grow your business, grow your idea, minimizing cost impact. So, you know, you balance things out in a whole bunch of different ways, but unless you have a product that is they can basically fill the void for many people in a really simple, cost-effective way. You can market that all day long and sell it because you're going to get word of mouth and people are going to recognize when they see it that it's something they want. Again, you fit all these specific criteria and parameters, you know, and this is what Amazon success is about. It's about finding products, getting great reviews on those products, people seeing the reviews and recognizing, wow, this is a great product. I mean, think about this for a second. How many times have you gone to a store, gone online, and found or saw a product that you didn't even know you were looking for, but you realized it solved a problem or was a simple solution to something that's been bothering you or annoying you for a long time, and you ended up buying that thing? Simplified your life in some way. I would venture to guess that most of us have been in that situation before in some way, shape, or form. Did you actually 100% need to buy that thing? No. Did it improve your life? Maybe sped up a process in your life? Maybe made your mornings better? I don't know. Whatever it might be, that product, those types of products can do that. On the other end of the spectrum, you might have a product or a service that you truly believe in, but the consumer hasn't realized the value yet. And that's something that you have to develop and work into your advertising, your public relations, your marketing, your message, your brand. So, and the reason I'm going into all these things and I keep 
running back to 1999 is because I want to scan forward and look at the things that have changed significantly. And I mentioned a couple of those things. And obviously, Google, Google, you know, wasn't really predominant at a certain point in time. It wasn't predominant at all. For those of you that go back into the later 90s, you know, Yahoo, Ask Jeeves, Microsoft, you know, uh, Internet Explorer, we remember that too. But there's just, you know, different browsers, different tools, different search engines. Things have changed a lot. And so, but the one thing that has maintained and the one thing that I truly believe will never, ever change and the underpinning point of all this, it doesn't matter if you're digital, it doesn't matter if you're doing old school newspaper advertising, which a lot of people still do and do successfully in various forms. You just have to be able to connect. And ideally, you're connecting to the right people and you're impacting enough to cause an action. And this is why in modern digital advertising, we have what's called call to actions because we're asking someone to do something. I would suggest if you're really interested in the topic of marketing or you're trying to learn and grasp how your business or if you're just a marketer, check out VPF Marketing because in that analogy, it breaks down the simplicity of what marketing is into three components that speak to more modern marketing in a very basic way, but a very fundamental way that you should be able to take something from that, use it, and apply it to your advertising campaigns and marketing. Another really important thing, and this is something that is tough for me, it's been the toughest thing for me to see, is a business owner sold on the idea that if they get their Facebook campaigns running and their ads running and smashing and getting millions or hundreds of thousands of people seeing their ads, they're all of a sudden going to solve all their business problems. And I say this over and over, but your advertising, marketing, public relations, particularly online, is one small component of the big picture. And I've seen business models that strictly run on word of mouth. They do very little digital advertising. And I've seen companies that strictly do digital advertising and really focus on nothing else and do just well, too. In my personal opinion, I think you need to be doing a combination of both or multiple forms, uh, even if it's print. But those percentages vary based on your business and the type of audience you're trying to reflect upon, obviously. So your younger generation, not necessarily going to be reading a newspaper or magazine the same way that, uh, you know, someone who's 55 or 70 might be doing. Newspaper, a magazine, and even the way that Google is searched and the in-app advertising that we see today. So there's all these various advertising platforms. And no matter how many places you advertise, promote, and get your message out there in any way, shape, or form, Usually, if it's not determined that it is returning its investment, whatever that return might be, and again, I'm always very broad about this because, again, whether it's a product, a service, an idea, a political campaign, whatever it might be, there's, there's different results that are trying to be attained. For example, you could be trying to build a mailing list. You could be offering an intro or free product, gathering information that way. You could be selling a product that no one's ever heard of and building a landing page to promote that product. You could be an Amazon seller that has tens of thousands of products and you are, you know, running specials on specific products and promoting them all over the place on various landing pages in different ways. So, The possibilities are really endless, but the most important thing, too, is to define for yourself and, again, whatever one of those categories you fall into, you define what it is in the objective you're trying to achieve. 
most businesses, whether you're a service provider, a product provider, doesn't matter. The uh, overall idea is to be profitable financially. In other words, making more than you're spending. And it's really troublesome and concerning once the data is really broken down and analyzed and when you how easy it can be to fall into the idea that things are very successful however when you start breaking down the numbers and the advertising spend and all of that you begin to see sometimes begin to see a different story i can't tell you the number of times i've spoken with onboarding new clients and discovering holes and problems within their current structure and model that don't truly assist in the tabulation and calculation of really where things are at and really how much it costs. Again, cost can be financial, it can be energy expended, it can be other resources being used. You know, all of that needs to be taken into consideration to really look at return a correct return on investment. And I know, again, these numbers can be kind of loosely used, like return ROI. Oh, okay, well, you know, it took me, uh, it takes me $20 to create this product and I sell it for t- uh, 30. So there's $10, but then, oh, wait a minute, we're doing free shipping. And then, and then there's, then there's this and there's that and there's this other fee. Oh, what about that thing we're throwing in? So you start to, you start to calculate and look at all the data and the details and you begin to see that the, Actuality can sometimes be different than the reality of what the uh, immediate appearance might be. So this goes back to many earlier podcasts that I've done on knowing your numbers, really understanding very down to the minute detail your, your, your numbers and your energy in terms of resources expended in, very, in whatever various ways those might be and uh, taking and factoring those into the entire process. I have seen business models go from a complete, you could say, proactive advertising campaign, blasting all over ads all over online, everywhere, very successful and very lucrative and profitable and done very well and helped tons of people. On the other end, I've seen that same scenario roll out and pull back from all of that and go straight into a more one-on-one model, down back, you could say, back to basics or quote, old school marketing and advertising, which it's not about how you're doing it, in my opinion. It's about how effective it is. It doesn't matter if you're sending out handwritten letters in 2022, if that is still effective all the way around when taking everything into consideration, you know? So uh, again, this is my opinion. This is the way I've observed businesses succeed is not following trends, not listening to all the noise, but just looking at the data, looking at the numbers, and really, really smart number crunching and analysis. So that's what I sum up to success in online advertising, online marketing, and the creation of a successful brand. On the other side of that, there are a lot of other factors that come into play. And most importantly, again, it's really just falling back to that connection and how can you speak to a specific audience about your product? How can you balance it out in such a way and really find out where you are on that scale? You know, do you need to? orient somebody on your product or service enough to the point where they realize it is useful or do they just know it out of the gate you know there's all these different scenarios and ways you approach your campaigns and I can't tell you how many times I've spoken and assisted business owners sort this out in various ways but particularly on the idea that there's a set idea that because company XYZ is recommending this that's right for my business or because Meta offers Instagram ads that are modern and story form or whatever, that must be the way I must go because that's where everyone's going. There is some truth into the fact that 
People do use digital technology today, and people do buy through that medium. Whether it's right for your product, whether it connects with your audience in the right way, whether it's efficient or sufficient to cause that action that you're trying to achieve, that's a completely different conversation. So when we think about this marketing advertising, we also have to think about gradients and where are you on that gradient and finding yourself in the right place and where do you start? And ultimately, it falls back to where you put, what are you, in, what are you investing time and creative and energy or money, resources, or whatever it might be? What are you in putting, investing that in? And is it going to max, maximize your result? That's pretty much all I have for you today. I was going to dive back into 1999 and scan forward the primary changes we know that have occurred over the years just quickly is really the boom of social media that really changed everything. And for those of you that remember, even back in you know 2004, 2005, you know Craigslist was even a, a successful advertising platform for for digital advertisers, for website developers, designers, graphics artists, your graphic designers. It was a place where you could actually go and drum up business. That changed, I believe, in about 2007. Craigslist basically changed the, the fundamentally how they allow you to advertise and promote on their platform. And to my opinion, it was a tailspin from there because it was um, really, in my opinion, helping a lot of businesses flourish um, from the way they had the original, the way you were allowed to promote originally through their platform. But it may have not, you know, may not have been profitable and lucrative enough, and they needed to figure out a way to pay their employees. So there's that, um, you know, reality. But uh, anyway, scanning forward, face, you know, and then Facebook, you know, came into the scene right around the two, you know, uh, 2006 era. But it wasn't advertising at that time. You know, the advertising started building in later, and it started rolling out as the weird year, years went by when Facebook started transforming into the machine it became. And so that was another evolution, which became a big one. And then, of course, Google, you know, hasn't been around forever. But as soon as they opened up the doors to their advertising possibilities and and um, in the early days, you know, understanding how the algorithm worked, things have changed a lot. There were ways to really um, guarantee that you could get positioned in, in their organic results in such a way and, you know, and, and uh, the system was manipulated, unfortunately. And so a lot of policies and rules and the algorithm had to be really adjusted. A lot of things changed to um, basically create a more balanced field. You could say, I know many would argue that, depending on the subject. I'm talking about just products and services, not talking about politics. So um, there's been a lot of evolution and if you are a business owner and you're currently in any position where you're having trouble drum up business, you know, the first thing I'm going to say, and as a, as a being a, my field, my profession being in digital advertising, digital marketing, online public relations, I first recommend look internally. Look at your product. Look at your service. Look at your numbers internally um, and find out where you are before you dive into some big broad campaign and uh, discover more about what's going on internally and then try to find and isolate what any problems might be there and then work your way outward again and then build your campaign around that and build out forward so that's all I have for you today. I'm going to uh, end off here pretty soon. I'm probably not going to be back on again until after the new year. So if you don't hear from me, hopefully this, uh, this podcast inspired you in some way. If not, wishing you a you and your family and your friends a wonderful holiday um, and a brilliant, brilliant 2023. I uh, wish you the most success going into the new year. there so okay guys well thank you very much for listening wishing you a great day and until next time be well take care and uh, succeed thanks for listening